Hi guys, welcome to another video. Thank you very much for all your questions and what you guys would like to see. It's sometimes hard for us to think of ideas what to put up. One of the latest questions was how do you aim? Now aiming is very personal. Everybody's got their way of how they aim. Those of you that have been diving a long time or probably set in your ways, that's fine. What works for you is fine. I on the other hand have had to do many pool tests over the years. So I needed to try and work out a way that is uniform. Every time I aim a gun, it must, I must have a way of sighting it. These guns aren't like a rifle where you have specific sights. They much more plain, much like a basic bow and arrow. So some guys aim instinctively. They just point and shoot. Some guys use their muzzle, especially with the older guns, pre-rail guns. They would aim, drop the gun, drop the gun, and as soon as the spear tip disappeared, they'd pull the trigger and they'd be on target. That became a problem with the advent of the rail because the spears were now much shorter. Guys tended to do exactly the same, drop the gun, but being shorter on the spear, it would disappear sooner. They would fire and shoot high every time. To compensate that, some guys then started using longer spears just for the way they aim. So the way I've had to aim in a pool is to try and always use exactly the same technique, exactly the same lineup and uh, like a set of sights. It's much more difficult on fish, but in a pool, this is the only way I could be consistent with seeing what that gun was doing. Then I would tweak the gun and shoot again and see what would happen. So there's quite a few variables here. So we're gonna show you a few images we took of what you will be seeing holding the gun out in front of you. Remember, always hold your arm out very stiff. To target practice, we have a whole video on that. We'll put the link up here. You can refer to that and it'll teach you a lot. You need to dial your gun in, especially if you're buying a new gun. Very important to be familiar with how it's shooting before you get in the water. If you've got pool access, great. It's difficult for obviously for those that don't. You can use the same target in the sea. Obviously, you'll need a nice, calm environment to work it. So the first image I'm going to show you is what you'd be looking at down the gun. With an open muzzle, there is a ring, obviously, in the closed end. We need to try and set that up in the Vs. The first image shows you the focus. Obviously, these are still images, quite difficult to, to show everything in one image. So the first image shows what you'd be seeing from the back of the handle. As soon as you focus further down, you can see the spear, you can see the front of the muzzle, and I use the edges of the barb. I line those up with the V in the, in the rubber. You can see the little rings, they form a V. This image is not very straight, but you can get a better understanding of where the barb is. You can move that left and right and get those barbs sitting exactly between that V. Now, you fire it like this and see where it hits. You can then tweak it, either drop it slightly or raise it slightly. Keep in mind where it is, what works best, and then continue using that gun set up like that. Obviously, an open muzzle needs the mono to wrap over the top. A little more difficult to see the barb pins. This is an image from the back lining them up more or less. This next image, you can see the V of the rubber and the muzzles. Again, kinked slightly to the one side. You can just swing that left or right till it sits in the middle. This third image, much better, but you can see more of the spear. I would still drop this slightly. So the top edge of that muzzle lines up with the top edges of the rubbers. So this gives you a method to always shoot consistently. Obviously, guns of different lengths will perform slightly different. Guns with double rubbers, like this one, as you can see, much less view of the muzzle. So now you have to be much more cautious of how you're sighting. Do you set it up so it just disappears? Exactly the same happens with the open muzzle. The top edges might be just visible above the rubbers. Whatever works for you, you need to Try and be consistent with how you aim. And if your spear goes off radically, could be that the barb has something stuck in it. 
that will create a, a high shot. So there's many factors that can affect your shot once fired. If it was shooting straight all the time, all of a sudden it's going off. The first time might have been you, but if it does it consistently, second and third time you're missing again, then it might be the spear. Maybe bent, maybe the line wraps hooking something, maybe your barb is jammed. A little bit of fish scale can easily jam a barb. Always double check your barb to make sure that the barb is opening and closing properly. So in the previous video showing target shooting, you'll see it's important to have a straight arm, preferably hold it very tight. The more recoil that the gun gives, the more it can affect your shot. So it's important to hold it very tight. Some guys even use two hands when aiming, um, especially on a double rubber gun. If the gun is too light, there's going to be much more recoil. The more mass you have on the gun, the less the recoil. Hence, our introduction of the Timberline guns. You can now power them up more and that recoil is much more dampened. Another point I made in the target shooting was be aware that if you're left-handed, the gun will shoot more to the right. And if you're right-handed, it will shoot more to the left. By changing hands, you'll see this. It's quite obvious once you've done it a few times using both hands. The more power the gun, the bigger that degree of error does occur. This is one of the reasons why rollers were that much better. That recoil is much less and your left to right deflection is therefore proportionately less. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Stand by for the next.